<coughs> well, good morning. Uh, just thought I'd do another uh, quick video on a piece of uh, Hewlett Packard test gear that I acquired. Uh, what you can uh, see I have here is a HP 461 uh, amplifier. This is a fixed gain amplifier. It's uh, 20 and 40 uh, dB of gain uh, and it handles uh, a maximum signal of uh, uh, 1 volt AC. Now this is a commonly used instrumentation in lab work where you need to step up a, a signal by 10 or 100 times and so uh, if you want to get a signal in here that if you've got a signal below you know sort of 5 millivolt uh, you can feed it in here set the gain for 40 and you'll get a distortion free uh, signal come out uh, of the uh, output here at a you know, 100 times the voltage, so it'll be much uh, easier for your uh, test equipment to look at uh, that signal. Now, this is a fairly wide gain, uh, sorry, wide band uh, amplifier. It runs from about uh, five, uh, I think about five kilohertz to 150 megahertz, and it should be essentially flat and distortion free across that. Uh, I got this uh, to help me uh, increase the, the levels of some signals as I uh, go and calibrate uh, a bunch of this old gear. So let's take a, a look inside. Uh, it's quite a, a classic design from that era. It has the, the posi drive screw on it uh, with the, the little top that you can take out. And in here you'll see the various different uh, uh, boards. There's the, the main board with the amplifier and the power supply board. Uh, if we go and have a look at uh, uh, what's uh, on the bottom here, uh, there isn't a lot of interest in the bottom, so we'll just slide that. Uh, uh, we'll just slide that uh, the board off there, and uh, take a quick peek inside, and then we'll put it back on. Basically, you can see the AC input, uh, the switch fusing to set uh, whether it's uh, 220, 230 volt, or 110. Uh, our amplifier and some uh, uh, the bottom of the the board, and then the output attenuator. Uh, that you've got there. So let's just uh, drop that back in and we'll put this top back on and then flip the unit back over. <clears throat> Alright, so this is not the first time I've had the top off uh, uh, this unit, and in fact if you uh, uh, look in here and uh, we zoom in a bit, let me just zoom in, you'll be able to see uh, right about here uh, there's a, a new piece of soldering. Uh, when I first got this, uh, one of the first steps that uh, I like to do is check the, the power supply voltages are correct. So I had the bottom of the unit off and um, I was uh, uh, just about to check the, the voltage and uh, I screwed up and dropped my probe and of course Murphy bit me, uh, the probe uh, connected itself, there was a flash of sparks, puff of smoke and uh, uh, the system stopped working and what I had done was I had blown up uh, this little uh, Zener diode in here that is used as a voltage reference so I had to go uh, buy a 14.7 volt uh, Zener diode and put it back in. So what we have here <coughs> is the, the basic amplifier. It has the power supply board and the amplifier board. Now this power supply board uh, will take uh, uh, the standard AC voltage and it puts out uh, a plus or minus 15 rail, uh, 15 volt rail that the, the amplifier section will go use. Uh, the amplifier section is basically just a set of cascaded uh, uh, transistor amplifiers uh, in an emitter follower sort of uh, layout and the first emitter follower is done to match the uh, the impedance so that we get a 50 ohm input impedance uh, and then the output emitter follower does the, the same thing and then each of the individual stages there's uh, uh, five little individual stages in here and you can see them one, one, two, three, four, five those uh, uh, stages in there, they will generate uh, about 8.4 or so uh, dB of gain each and uh, they'll make uh, a total uh, of 42 uh, dB of gain and then on the uh, input and output emitter followers you lose about 2 dB so that gives us about a 40 dB uh, gain there and you can see that it's a fairly standard um, 
uh, approach. If we have a look at the actual schematic and we zoom in a little bit, you know, you can see that uh, we start off with the, the emitter follower uh, and it's the, a fairly textbook outline and then it's basically just cascaded sections time and time again until you get to the output uh, emitter follower which pushes that out. You can see the power supply uh, is over here and this is the uh, zenodiode that I blew up. Uh, this zenodiode sets a voltage reference, the control transistor then drives the series regulator to uh, uh, ensure that we get the, the proper voltage. Uh, don't uh, arc those components up, you'll blow that zenodiode apparently. So that's a, a quick look inside the, uh, the unit. Let's reassemble it and then see it in action. Okay. So here we have uh, uh, the unit set up. Uh, what I have is I have a, a signal. Uh, bring that over. I have the signal coming into the unit a little bit uh, uh, from my signal generator, coming into the, the to the amplifier here, uh, and then I have a T that's taking the, that input over to my HP 400F uh, AC voltmeter. Uh, uh, these are uh, quite good, the 400F uh, and the 400E. Um, the 400F goes up to uh, a, a signal of uh, 4 megahertz and will read AC voltage, uh, RMS AC voltage up to uh, 4 megahertz. The E will read up to 10 megahertz. Uh, that beats my modern DMM, which uh, I think maxes out uh, on the AC reading of only uh, uh, 300 kilohertz. So this gives you a, a way of reading uh, signals that have a, a, a much higher uh, frequency than uh, you would normally read with a, a digital multimeter. Anyway, uh, what you can see here is I have the range set for one volt and we're reading uh, uh, 100 millivolts and I have my signal generator set to 100 millivolts so uh, reading we're getting there is uh, pretty bang on. So if I now take uh, that out and then connect in uh, the amplifier, let me just plug that on and then just drop in uh, the output here and then turn this on. Uh, what you can see now is with 20 dB what I should be getting is uh, a 10 times gain uh, on the value and I went from uh, uh, 100 milli uh, millivolts to 800 millivolts. So I'm running a little low uh, in terms of the gain on uh, this amplifier. Now the uh, the manual says that you can calibrate the gain and you, the way you calibrate the gain is by replacing a uh, uh, resistor and in fact I think uh, from memory the way you calibrate the, the gain if we just uh, put this in here is you're going to go in and replace uh, R13 here and that will enable you to tweak the initial gain on uh, the entire amplifier so I might go do that to restore it right back to uh, its original uh, gain, but you can see that I'm pulling in uh, 0.8 there. So if I go in and change the amplitude of my signal generator to 10 uh, millivolt and then set it to 40, you'll see that I'm roughly pulling in around the same uh, 800 uh, uh, millivolts. And so that's now, uh, I've now gone uh, to 100 times uh, gain on the, the 40 dB. So we can take a slightly different look at this and we can do this by uh, actually putting in a set of attenuators uh, in place and then utilizing uh, the dB scale on the 400 series uh, emitter. Now the 400F has the dB scale down the bottom, the 400FL will have the dB scale on the top with the volt scale on the bottom. But uh, let's take that signal that we have in there um, right now and uh, what I'm going to go do is remove this I'm going to uh, drop this in here and then I'm going to come back to my signal generator and now I'm just going to roll the signal generator up until I get a reading of 0 dB. So let me, that's a little bit more. Uh, that was pretty much bang on. 
Now, with that reading of uh, 0 dB, what I can now do is take um, a 40 dB attenuator. Now, this is a little uh, attenuator made by Rigol. I bought it from my scope. Uh, I've checked this uh, using my DMM. It's uh, pretty much bang on. It's like 40.03 dB. So, what I can now do is I can now take this drop this in here and when I plug this back in here we're now able to go and swap the output and if we look at the output you can see that I'm now I'm a little less than 2 dB um, down in terms of the uh, the gain because you can see that it's dropped from 0 to uh, about 1.9 dB and I can do the same thing uh, with the with the 20 volt uh, signal let's go back in and swap these uh, back out let me take this out this is a, a 20 dB uh, tech scan uh, attenuator that uh, I know is actually 20.3 dB uh, of attenuation at 50 megahertz uh, I'm a little bit lower than a fair bit lower than that but uh, if I drop that in there with 20 dB, you can see I can come back in here and, uh, you know, I can zero the meter and we can, let's take a look at that. Let me go and add a little bit of, a little bit more voltage to that. Now that things have changed a bit. There you go. That's about bang on about zero and now I can swap those uh, back in and you'll see that I'm about 1.57 maybe um, 1.7 uh, dB uh, uh, low so maybe about 1.5 ish this is about 0.3 uh, high you know around that area so I'm about one and a half dB in both cases low so Changing that resistor will bring up. Anyway, that was a, a quick uh, look at uh, the 461A. Um, I might go make that change, and then uh, uh, we can have a look at uh, the result of that uh, in a later video. Thanks very much. Bye.